Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a new no skill strategy that completely took over Clash Royale. This new Giant Graveyard deck has got a grip on the meta and it's taking everyone's trophies. Giant Graveyard already has some of the most destructive offensive potential in the entire game. But with the added Night Witch, it's going to bring even more pain. Your opponent will stress about the bats stockpiling up in the front while the skeletons surround the entire tower. If your opponent uses spells to finish off the Night Witch, they're not going to have anything to clean up the graveyard skeletons. So if opponents rely on poisoning the graveyard too much on defense, the bats are going to slap them silly. Lots of decks have Mother Witch for all the Night Witch bats and the graveyard. But since you have Bowler, you can bounce back their pigs or just completely clean up the Mother Witch using Snowball and Arrows. This is currently the best giant graveyard deck in the game and a ton of top 200 players are playing it. So let's go jump right into ladder and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Creator Code Sertag to support the channel. Thanks to Sandbox for sponsoring the video today. We're gonna be doing a $20 giveaway, so stay tuned to find out more. Sandbox is the world's largest multiplayer game where you can create an avatar and interact with over 300,000 players and over 200 of your favorite brands directly in-game, including The Walking Dead, Steve Aoki, Snoop Dogg, and so much more. Tony Hawk's Skating Park is absolutely sick. There's just a lot of childhood nostalgia there. There's also a ton of user-generated content. You can build high-quality escape rooms, dungeon crawlers, or even a whole new world. Sandbox Season 3 is happening right now. And there's only a few more weeks to claim the rewards. They're giving away 1.5 million sand, and the top prize being over 30,000 sand. Just create an account and download the game for free using my link in the description of the video. Just sign in on Google, Facebook, or Twitter, and you're good to go. You don't need a crypto wallet to play, but if you have one, you can connect it. Either way, the game is completely free to play. Load into the alpha lobby and use the map to teleport to different experiences. And start completing quests for points. To enter, take a picture with your avatar next to Snoop Dogg and tweet it out to me. Just add Sir Tag CR in your tweet and use the hashtag Sandbox Giveaway to enter to win. To enter the giveaway, you have to download Sandbox using my link in the description of the video or in the pinned comment and at least get to level two. All right, we got a game against Shadows. So we've been lurking in the shadows with this giant graveyard deck and we are waiting for our moment to pounce. Unfortunately, he doesn't drop anything at us. So I don't want to go for giant in the back first play. Typically with this deck, I want my opponent to spam enemy, give me an elixir advantage, and then I can feel a little bit more comfortable unleashing the giant. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go in for the opposite lane aggression because I want to be able to defend the Skeleton King with just bats. That would make me a very happy sir because it's going to be hard for him to go and get any value with the Skeleton King if he doesn't go in for like arrows or, you know, a snowball to finish off those bats. Okay, he's going to have Mother Witch and he's going to have Fisherman. So this is not a matchup that I enjoy playing, but it's something that I can win if I play well enough. I'm going to go for a snowball here so we minimize the amount of piggies that he can get. Oh my gosh. Wait, we have one bat left over. That might be the bat that saves me the entire game. I'm not sure, but it's looking okay for me. Not great. We have another bat alive, and it will be able to finish off the balloon. So the major weakness with this deck, I'm sure you guys have guessed it, there are not many balloon answers. You've got bats, you've got night witch bats, and then, of course, you're going to have, like, snowball and arrows. Snowball is probably going to be your best answer to, like, knock back your opponent's stuff, maybe baiting out your opponent's zap with the skeleton army or your bats so then the night witch bats can clean up the balloon. It's just, it's not easy. However... This is looking a bit more spicy for me because he just went for Ray Recruits in the back right into a bowler. So I think we can line up some strikes, maybe strike down his tower and uh, find our way back into the game. I'm going to go in for bats here and I think it's okay if he goes and pulls that. It doesn't matter that much to me because I know that I can get like a snowball here to finish off the Mother Witch and then the bats are still going to stay alive and we can go for a giant afterward. Eating the recruits is a little bit risky, but I think the bats are going to stay behind the piggy so then it doesn't get targeted by the tower so then they can also maybe even kill the Skeleton King. That worked out really well for us. Giants putting in work. Oh my gosh, that Inferno Dragon is literally griefing me right now. How am I supposed to kill that thing? That That is the few... I don't know. That's going to be one of the few problems right now. If he goes in for an aggressive play with Inferno Dragon, I have to go in for the, the Night Witch so I can spawn an endless amount of bats. He's likely going to be able to get away with like a Mother Witch here, so I need to go in for bats and then also go in for a bowler so I can kill the piggies. And if I don't do that, I'm definitely going to lose. All right. So if he Mother Witches, we are going to get poised and going in for the Snowball and the Arrows. I'm also going to go in for a Giant here as well. If he Fireballs, he's not able to knock those two back. So I'm just waiting for him to go for the Mother Witch. Maybe the Bowler can lock onto the tower and be like a scuffed Magic Archer. That's that's another thing that we're hoping to have happen. I am going to go for the Arrows and the Snowball. And the Giant might be able to take tower here. This is actually looking really nice. There's no shot I win this, right? I, I literally, I, I have no way of defending this. What do I do? Do I go for a defensive graveyard? No, that's not going to work. Maybe I can Arrows? Is the Balloon going to take it out in time? There's 14 seconds. That is definitely taking my tower. I am so screwed. No, I wanted to win this so bad, man. 
Okay, I'm gonna go in for a giant graveyard and I'm trying to go in for like snowball and arrows here. Maybe we can disrupt everything and then go in for a skeleton army in the middle. There's no shot that the skeleton army takes it, right? That would be improbable. The skeletons and the bats are swarming him though. That That's a lot of damage. We are able to kill the rest of the skeleton king. You know what? This is not looking terrible yet. This is This has been bad, but it hasn't been like unsalvageable. So I'm gonna go in for a giant and I'm gonna go for a graveyard and I want the graveyard to be directly on top of that. Otherwise, I'm definitely gonna lose. I need the graveyard skeletons just to fully surround him. If I go for a snowball, this might be enough to shut down the balloon. He's not gonna stop it and we three crown him? Wait, what? <laughs> that just doesn't feel fair. I think giant graveyard, if you're playing against Mother Witch, Fisherman, Inferno Dragon, Skeleton King with no way of resetting the Fisherman or the Inferno Dragon, the Skeleton King collecting an endless amount of souls while the Mother Witch turns all of your skeletons and your bats into piggies, that matchup just doesn't feel like it should be possible. But as you guys can see, giant graveyard is one of the most skillless decks in the game that always allows you a chance to win. And after that W, we're 9,400 in the world. We got a game against someone from the Legend Clan. So first things first, we're just gonna drop a good luck and see what this guy's up to. If he goes and spams into a Night Witch, I'd love to go and get some good counter push, but that's not going to happen. Oh, it's got to be log bait when we see Princess of the River. It could be like a hog rider fast cycle deck, or it's going to be log bait. Great reaction time with the log, so he ended up getting way more damage than most log bait players would. But credit where credit is due, you took a uh, 500, no, 800 damage on my tower. I'm going to bowler in the back, and if he's crazy, if he's feeling vicious, he'll rocket this, and I would die laughing, because then he would die afterward. Typically, if you rocket a bowler in single elixir and it doesn't kill the bowler because it never will, then the opponent will use the bowler for counter push and you'll lose the game to like Lumberjack Balloon Freeze or just someone running giant graveyard like us. I'm going to go for a graveyard here. and I don't know how much damage I'm going to get, but I think the bats are going to give our opponent some struggles. Typically, the bats and the graveyard skeletons work in great conjunction together because the bats will be attacking from the front while the skeletons swarm them in directly on the tower and then, you know, the princess can't hit everything at once. Yo, wait. The bowler cleaned up all the goblins. The Night Witch still didn't get targeted by the princess. I don't know how that worked out. Are you kidding me? I got way more damage than I thought was going to happen. All right, so we can giant here, and then we can go in for bats. The bats will kill the princess and probably protect us from an Inferno Tower. I don't know how much damage we're going to get here, but it's a 5 for 5 trade with the Inferno Tower, so it's not that bad. And it's a plus 1 against the princess with the bats. So we'll take that trade every time we can. And we can go in for a Skeleton Army to conveniently counter the Goblin Barrel if you want to drop it in the back. If you don't, then whatever. Doesn't matter to me either. There's a high chance that he's going to go for a Goblin Barrel on either the right-hand side or wait for the Bowler. And then he'll drop it afterward. We'll have to wait and see what he's planning. This guy's a mischievous sir. He's just like brewing over there and trying to figure out what he wants to do. I think we can go in for a Night Witch again and then Arrows on the Princess. That will likely be our best bet. If we can finish off the princess fast, even if he goes in for a goblin barrel right now, it's going to be hard for him to defend this because he's not going to have as much splash damage as he's hoping. And the knight is always getting knocked back. If only we had a couple bats left over, that would have been amazing. Okay, so we can go for a snowball here to knock everything back so we can minimize the amount of damage. Yo, we hit an ice spirit too. Wait, that's so good. I think the ice spirit's going to die. Please, please, please. No. Oh, it didn't. No, it did jump onto my tower and splash it. I couldn't see, guys. The arena was icy or it looks kind of tealish and it messed with my eyes. Feels bad, man. That is uh, guerrilla warfare, blending into your surroundings with that ice spirit. Okay, so I think I want to go for a graveyard right now because I do have a nice arrows lined up on the goblin gang. That was his only good answer. And I think I can go in for bats here, expecting him to probably go in for like an inferno tower soon. And when he decides to do that, the bats are going to be able to soak up all of that. So he has to go in for a princess too. And now we can go for a skeleton army to conveniently counter the entire goblin barrel. If you drop your skeleton army there, the goblin barrel gets no damage. I'm sure you guys knew that, but I just wanted to keep that in mind in case you didn't. I'm going to bowl her in the middle because it is able to kill the princess. And then I'm going to go in for a Night Witch here. And then I'm going to go in for the Skeleton Army in the back and then stop his attack. Okay, that was a great Inferno Tower on his end. I didn't think he was going to drop that, so well played. I think I'm going to go in for a Graveyard here. And hopefully the princess targets the bowler instead of hitting our stuff. If he does that, we might be able to win the game with the nice arrows here. But he's got to go Goblin Gang. He's going to arrows on the Goblin Gang instead, and that's going to put him out of his misery. GG, well played, and peace out. That bowler was so clutch. We stacked up so many bats on the left-hand side. Because the princess prioritized targeting the bowler on the right, it had no way of cleaning up all the bats and the skeletons on the left. And by the time it looked left, there was nothing left over for it to defend. And after winning that one, now we're 8,000 in the world. All right, we got another one here. So this guy isn't cycling anything at the start. So I think we can take matters into our own hand with the giant in the back. It's one of those things that... If you go in for a giant in the back first play, you have to have Night Witch and you have to have Skeleton Army and Bats. And we have everything in our card cycle that allows us to do it. If he goes and spams the other side, we can conveniently counter everything with the Skeleton Army for a nice positive elixir trade. And also at the same time, like I'm not overspending because I have very cheap cards that I can defend with. 
All right, this is a bit sketchy. I'm going to go for a Graveyard Bats on the right-hand side because I need to be able to defend the left-hand lane, and I need to cycle two cards to get back to the bowler. So just decided to do that there. I'm going to go for the bowler now, and I think that we're able to kill the Executioner. The only thing I'm scared about right now is the fact that the homie could potentially go in for a very aggressive Hog Rider, and I don't have an amazing answer to that. So I think I'm going to Giant to go and pull back the Valkyrie and stop him from activating King Tower with the Bowler because he has to focus on defending the, the Giant that's coming at him. Does he lose the Valkyrie? Is this smart for us to go for arrows? I am able to kill the Valkyrie. Dude, the Bowler might be able to kill it. Oh my gosh. I think snowballing here is very risky, but I have to do it. I need to do it. I killed the Executioner on his side of the map, and we got a 1,000 damage with our Giant. That is ludicrous, guys. I thought we were screwed, but fortunately for us, we were able to pull through. I think he might pre-log, so I would just go for bats there. Typically, when you have Giant Graveyard, everyone's going to predict you for going in for a Skeleton Army, so make sure that you don't do that, unless you're at Lower Ladder and people don't necessarily know that you're running Giant Graveyard, but this guy did know I was Giant Graveyard, so... I just want to make sure I went for bats instead of the predictable skeleton army. He thought I was bad. He, everyone thinks giant graveyard players are bad every time, but not everyone's bad, you know? Giant graveyard does require some thought process to not get pre-logged. Okay, I can giant graveyard here. Oh, man, I said it requires some thought process, and I immediately went for a graveyard at the river. Yep. All right, so in this specific point, I think it's a, a good play to do because I can knock the executioner and hopefully have it retarget onto skeletons instead of the giant and the night witch. And then maybe we're able to kill it. I don't know if this is going to work out as planned, but I hope it does. Let me kill the Executioner! <laughs> okay, it wasn't going to die, so now i got to go for Bowler. The other good thing about this deck is most giant graveyard decks will just roll over when they see a lot of splash damage. But Bowler is one big, beefy boy, so it's, it's nice to be able to play that way. I'm going to Night Witch, and I think I can giant graveyard again on the right-hand side, and it's going to be hard for him to defend. I really wish I had Tornado. I would whisk the Executioner to the other side and just give our opponent a lot of grief. Anyway, I can still go in for a Snowball here. I'm going to expect him to go in for Goblins eventually. I don't know when they're going to happen, but I will arrow on them. The Night Witch put in a lot of work, too. Wait, is the Giant going to hit the tower? Oh, come on. One hit, one hit. Something. Nothing? Really? Oh, you got to be joking me right now. So, fortunately for us, he uses Tornado, so he has nothing to kill bats. Literally nothing. So, when he Hog Riders, it's going to be wasted. It's only going to get, like, one hit on my tower, so it's not that bad. He needs to be able to put me in Rocket Range, which I don't think is possible. I think I'm able to chip you out with more Giant Graveyards. So I'm going to go in for the skill graveyard. He has to go in for Tornado again. That's what he's going to do. Wait, no, he just rocketed and gave up in the game. Okay, he didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> he knew the pattern that he fell into, and we were just going to rinse and repeat the exact same trades until the game was over. We completely outdamaged him because he had a Tornado back the Giant. And if you had a Tornado back the Giant so then your tower could target my graveyard skeletons, you have no Tornado to finish off my bats. So every time you went for the Hog Rider, the Hog Rider is only going to get like one hit on my tower because the bats can clean it up. And my giant graveyard pushes, we're going to get way more damage than that one Hog Rider hit could ever hope to accomplish. All right, so jumping into this one, the dude is already going to be spamming a Goblin Gang at the river. So is it going to be another Log Bait player or is it going to be switching it up and running something different? All right, I can go in for a Bowler in the back if he decides to go in for a Valkyrie or something. Otherwise, I kind of want to chill and see if he decides to spam some other cards. If not, I guess I'll eventually go for the Bowler in the back because I'm very impatient as a human being. And he's got Skeleton King, so not the log bait deck that we were anticipating. Typically, we'd be like, Princess of the River, Goblin Barrel, my tower. But no, he's going to go for a slow Skeleton King in the back and be a methodical Sir. Okay, I think we can go Bats here depending on what happens. Fisherman, oh, this has got to be the Royal Giant deck. This is 100% RG. I don't know if this is good for him, because if we get the giant in front... Yo, the giant is just going to tank for the bats? Yo! Wait, no way! I can arrows here, and I can kill the goblin gang too. Yes, I made the prediction. <laughs> Let's get it. That was so clean. I didn't know if that was the smart play to do, but I really wanted to do it. I pulled the trigger, and I took the tower. So even if you're playing against a Mother Witch guy that has, you know, Fireball and Goblin Gang and Skeleton King... As you guys can see, you can still take their tower in a minute, and it doesn't even matter. So with the rest of this game, with a minute 30 seconds, there's no way that he's going to be able to take my tower in time. It's just, it's not possible. This guy tried to take a tower, but the only thing he was able to accomplish was letting me stack up multiple bowlers and letting me take multiple towers. He must be a super sad sir losing to Giant Graveyard despite having Mother Witch and Skeleton King. After dominating the most popular deck in the game, now we're 6,900 in the world. All right, we got a game against someone that loves Rocket in their name. So hopefully we can blast off with this win and have our opponent just miss a Rocket. Chief Padded, bro. Okay, typically when we see Ice Spirit, we know it's going to be either like Log Bait or it's going to end up being a Rocket Cycle deck that's going to be really annoying with a lot of defensive cards. So I see Valkyrie. I could go for a Bowler here. It's just a bit risky. I want to drop my Night Witch at 10 Elixir so then the Night Witch Bats aren't going to get too far ahead. Oh no! This is not what I thought it was. This is weird. It's a Mortar deck with Valkyrie and Archer Queen. So I think it's going to be a fast cycle deck with either Rocket or Pl 
Poison or Fireball. So I don't actually know. I can't place my finger on what card it's going to be, but maybe the Night Witch is able to pop off and kill the Queen. Oh my gosh. He literally lost the Queen on his side of the map without clicking the Invisibility. Why would he do that? Oh, guess, I guess it would have died to the Bowler, so he didn't want to spend the Elixir anyway. That it does make sense, but I, I think it was worth it for him to drop it. All right, I'm going to go Bats with the Bowler in the right-hand side and do a very scuffed Graveyard push. I don't think it's going to work out, but maybe it does. No! Yo, we played against so many difficult matchups today, and now we're playing against Poison? Oh, no. It was tough. If that bowler gave us that partying shot, that would have been a vibe. But the good thing about the deck is most giant graveyard decks fall flat in this type of situation. Ours operates a lot better. Specifically because the opponent doesn't have poison, it's going to be hard for him to defend the giant graveyards because he's not going to be able to poison on top of the Night Witch and the graveyard at the same time. So that's what we're rolling with here. Oh my gosh, this arrow's value is out of the world. We're able to kill them. Oh my gosh, this is really good. I, I am so satisfied whenever we eliminate Goblin Gang or Guards. And there's no way you can guard the tower. Homie had Valkyrie, control deck with Archer Queen and Poison, and still got destroyed in two minutes. He did 300 damage to my tower, and then he called good game. Wow, that's disgusting. He actually poisoned the King Tower and gave up. He didn't even want to play it anymore. Honestly, I don't blame him either. There's no way you can come back when you're running a control deck against Giant Graveyard when you've already lost the tower. After crushing that game, we are 6,000 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an awesome rest of your day.